Hi, I'm Todd Nock. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So uh, we're going to continue with this uh, X-Men group shot here. Moving on to coloring the next character. Next character, Nightcrawler. So um, I'm going to share the Copic codes for the uh, colors that I'm using. And uh, I'll also explain kind of my coloring process. Much like I did with Wolverine, we're just going to continue that with the next character, Nightcrawler. So let's flip the camera around, get to work. Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna start with um, his uniform here. So we're gonna start with a tunic with a red. Gonna start with R27. It's gonna be our base shade of red. Much like with Wolverine, and as I'll do with all the characters, I like to leave some white of the board as a potential highlight or to be able to blend into with lighter colors. So as I start to drop in the base shade. I'm considering the shape, the shape of his shoulder pads here, the shape of his shoulder, his pectoral muscles. Start to move into the abdomen, rib cage, things like that, the abs here. I have to consider each little section a separate shape. The wrinkles, these are all different shapes. And so I'm going to sculpt the color, or sculpt the shapes with color. Let's see, uh, it's got some red here on this cuff of the forearm, so that's going to be a more cylindrical shape. So it's all about learning your shapes. Learn the shapes. So I'm going to come in with a little darker shade of red, an R56. It's kind of a sense of shadow, but I'll be like with Wolverine, I'll be coming in with some cool grays for some more realistic shadows, but these kind of give me some using some darker colors here, give me some variation just prior to adding the more realistic shadows. So sorry if I was off screen there, it's just sculpting in some color there. Now we've established the light is coming down pretty much from above, maybe a little bit to the left. So the darker shades will be going on the right, bottom right side of Nightcrawler, much like Wolverine in the previous video. If I keep an, eye, an idea of where the light is coming from, I can imagine where the light will be hitting and shadows falling on the opposite side. Okay, so now I have a lot of white on the board here. Too much white for the highlight. That's, that's far too much. The light's not that intense on him. So I'm coming in with now some R24. I'm going to blend that darker shade of red into that medium shade of red into this white area. Going to eat up a lot of that white with this uh, R24. Just leaving a wee little bit of, of the white of the board as a highlight on Nightcrawler's costume. And it'll come in more into play as we fill in other characters in subsequent videos. Kind of help them stand out against the background characters. Just leaving the little teeny tiny bits of the white and the wrinkles there just to give it a little the eye a little something to play with. The eye candy. Same here with the cuff just leaving a little bit of the white just the teeny teeniest tiniest bit. So as I, as I come in with the, the sh lighter shade of red, slightly lighter shade of red, then the R27, it uh, kind of smooths everything out in a real nice way. All right, now let's move on to Nightcrawler's skin tone, which I'm going to start with um, the B04. I'm going to use a couple of different shades of blue here. 
This is gonna be my initial base shade. Now, so this is gonna be for the fur of his skin. We don't often think about it, but Nightcrawler is called the Fuzzy Blue Elf because he has a light fuzz over the entirety of his body, which we don't really draw in the fuzz unless it's an extreme close-up. But technically he has a light fuzz, maybe almost like a peach has a light fuzz on its skin. Same with Nightcrawler. So it's actually little blue hairs. But I like to keep the blue of his quote unquote skin different than the hair that's on his head, just to give different blues to play with and to make it stand out. Let's tackle the tail here. Still leaving a wee bit of the white as a, as a highlight or something I can play with by bringing in other shades of blue, which I will be doing here. Okay, so that was the B04. Now I'm gonna switch over to the B12. It's a different family of blues. Don't want a lot of white here on his fur. Maybe just a little bit there on the nose, but that's about it. So I'm blending that B04 into the white with the B12. Leaving the tiniest bit of a highlight there on his cheek just for a little bit of life. I'm gonna come in with a little B14 now as well, just for a little bit of the darker shades here on the bridge of the nose, the jawline. So I'm sculpting with color, keeping in mind the shapes of the planes of the face the different angles would be another way of putting that. Underneath the chin, a little bit on the tail here. All right, so that, that takes care of, of Nightcrawler's skin. Let's tackle the hair. So I'm gonna switch up to a different family of bees, or blues, I should say, the B97, very dark shade of blue a bluish gray. Just gonna tackle the roots here. We pull up a little further into the hair. So I, this is a little bit different approach than I do with the skin tones, uh, where I or any other part of the figure, like with Wolverine or Nightcrawler. Started with a medium shade, went darker, then went lighter. Here with the hair, I often start dark at the root and move lighter as I as I move out towards the outer part of the hair. I do this with blonde people. It's not always an exact rule of thumb with the hair, but I do it with certain characters, um, whether it be blonde, oftentimes blonde characters, or with Nightcrawler here. We'll see if I use the same trick when we get to Cyclops or uh, Marvel Girl, Jean Grey. So now with some B45, a lighter, sh yes, that's B45. I was using B97, now I'm using B45, and I'm gonna, Go over the B97 and blend that out into the wider part of the hair. So we're having a bit of a different shade of a blue than his skin tone. But I am going to use some of that B12, B12 that we had used before for the very lightest part of the hair coming out here towards the outer part and kind of blend that all through. So. Still in the same family as his, the fur of his skin, but also we have a little bit of a different shade. So his hair is just a little bit darker than the fur of his face. All right, 
uh, let's let's go ahead and square away the eyes. Now I like the eyes to kind of have a hint of a glow or be kind of bright. So I'm going to start with a base. This is a pretty small shot, so I can't get as detailed as if it were a larger shot, but some Y06. It's a very bright shade of yellow. So I'm going to use a little Y06. And then coming in with some Y19 to give it a little bit of a darker shade and round it out a little bit. It's very subtle, very subtle. And now we need to tackle his gloves. So we're gonna bring in some B01, kind of a blue-based white, shadow of a white. So I'm gonna leave a lot of the white of his gloves available here to signify that the gloves are white. But wherever I want there to be shadow, I'm gonna start with some blue, this very light shade of blue, the B000, if I didn't mention that before. Considering where the light's hitting, I'm gonna put the blue on the opposite side. So this is part one of sh the shadow for his the whites of his gloves. So that's the B000 there. So now I'm gonna add some more realistic shadows, much like I did with Wolverine, coming in with the cool grays, the cool grays. So let's start with the gloves. Gonna come in with some cool gray one, C1. I'm gonna go over that, gray, uh, that blue with this shade of gray. So it gives it a blue gray sort of look. Mixing these two colors, I've now created a third color. We'll probably see me do this a lot with any character that is of a white, has a white nature to their costume. Or like Iceman. We'll be seeing me use a lot of light blues and grays when we tackle Iceman in a future video. So as you can see there, it's got a bluish gray. Now that's just the kind of the base. I wanna add a little bit of a darker shade in certain areas. So I'm gonna pump up to a B, or I'm sorry, a cool gray three, a C. So I meant to say a C three. Just for some of those deeper recesses of the hand there, just want it to be a little bit darker. The parts that are furthest away from the light or where like the thumb is overlapping that part or this part of the wrist that's further away, this knuckle that's blocked by that the bend of the finger. Once a little darker, darker shade. So it gives, the, again, the eye something to play with. You know, I'm going to put a little bit here on this knuckle. Same with that one too because of the bend of the finger taking it away from the light. Okay, so that was some cool gray three. Now I'm gonna pump up to a cool gray, we're gonna start with a cool gray five, see how this works. I'm gonna put a heavy shadow here underneath this shoulder pad. Using the cool grays, allows for more realistic shadows, more so than using darker shades of whatever color that is. You know, whether it's darker shades of red on the red, darker shades of blue on the blue. When I bring in the cool gray, or the, yeah, the cool grays, maybe some warmer neutral grays, depending on what the illustration calls for. Uh, right now, just cool grays. Gives it a more realistic shadow, even though this is a very fantasy-based piece. Even my style is a bit more, it's not really a photorealistic style, more of a comic book pseudo-realism. Kind of a cartoony realism. I'm trying to walk that line. So coming in with some cool gray five, and we're gonna power down to a cool gray three here. Blend that cool gray five, really creates a different different uh, look here. You definitely can tell that's behind the shoulder and this part is over the shoulder. It's 
since he's bent over, his upper part of his torso is kind of shaped, creating a shadow over his abs, his abdomen here. So we're just gonna gray a lot more of that out, creating a sense of depth. All right, now I'm gonna kick over to the cool gray four. I'm gonna use this on the blues of his face. So on this side of the nose, because remember the light's coming from above and to the left, our left. So my shadows are gonna fall more so on the right from this angle for the most part. It's just more of my general rule of thumb. Something for me to consider. Using a little bit to sculpt uh, that kind of jawline, a little here underneath the ear, underneath the eyelid, or eyebrow for the eyelid. But definitely considering the angles of the face, the planes of the face. And some here on the tail, especially here at the base of the tail. And as it curves around, oops, so I hope that was on screen there, just bringing that around like that. Maybe add a little bit of this cool gray four to some of those darker parts of the palm to create even more that illusion of depth. A little bit more on that cheekbone. I like to come in and layer color on top of color as it dries. Just come in with another layer, like another coat of paint, a little bit here on the hair at the base, the root of the hair. There we go. You know what, we're gonna put a little bit of this cool gray in the eyes, just a teeny tiny bit. Not a lot, don't want it to overpower, but a little cool gray too, over here where I did that Y19. Just a little bit. It's very subtle, but those little subtleties can be really nice. And that's Nightcrawler, gang, as simple as that. This was a quick video. Uh, let's flip the camera around and, uh, and sign off. Hey there, gang. So there we go. Nightcrawler. We've got, we're two X-Men in. So um, yeah, there we go. So stay tuned. Next video will probably be uh, more than likely Jean Grey, and then we'll move over to Cyclops. Uh, so gang, thanks so much for tuning in. Be sure to uh, click like on this video if you liked what you saw. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, and maybe hit that bell to set your notifications to alert you anytime I post a new video or do a live stream. So gang, thanks so much. I appreciate all the support and uh, hopefully I'll see you again real soon. Take care. Keep on drawing. Keep having fun.